I think I'm live. Okay, hi everybody. This is Mark Malkin. I am the Senior Culture and Events Editor at Variety and welcome to this wonderful chat we are going to have with the creator, the director, writer, and the cast of The Fallout. So let's begin. First up, writer, director, Megan Park. Hi. <laughs> Jenna Ortega, who stars as Veda. Hey, Maddie everyone. Ziegler, who stars as Mia. Hello. Niles Pitch, who plays Quentin. Hey, guys. Will Rop as Nick. Hello. Lumi, Lumi Pollock as Amelia. Hello. Hi, everybody. So where shall we begin? Let's start with you, Megan. Wow. This is a wonderfully powerful um, film. And I guess I'm just going to say, you know, from the start, where did the story, it sounds odd to say, where did the story come from? We obviously know about these kind of stories, mm -hmm. but what inspired you? You know, this is your feature film debut, writing, directing. Where did it come from? That's a good question. <laughs> you know, I've, I've never been through this situation, fortunately, but it was something that I was obviously very aware about. And um, it was something that I was really scared of and I couldn't stop thinking about what it would have been like for me had I had to worry about going to school and, you know, this, someone coming into the school and shooting me, shooting it up, you know, and I, I grew up in a time when that wasn't as big of a problem. I grew up in Canada. So for a long time, I felt like maybe I wasn't the right person to touch on this subject, but it was just something that I couldn't stop thinking about. And then when Parkland happened, that was sort of where I was like, holy shit, I can't, um, I can't ignore this story in my brain anymore. And it feels like, you know, I would just love to tell a different side of this experience. You know, we obviously, we know about the amazing things that Emma Gonzalez and all these wonderful kids are doing. And I was so inspired by them. And I was thinking if I was in high school, I don't know that I'd be able to do that. I feel like I would just be so anxious. I couldn't leave my room. And I'd love to see that story because I hadn't seen it before. And it just kind of grew out of, out of that need to talk about it, I guess. So Jenna, what did you think when you first read the script? What did your team tell you the movie was about? Um, so the, when I first got the, the email for the script, it said the breakdown that I think is pretty much the same in the deadline headlines where it's, you know, um, school tragedy occurs, Veda, how she's coping. Um, I remember reading the script and being blown away, one, by the fact that this was the first time Megan um, had written a full length feature, but then also the initiative that she was taking. I'm always so supportive of female female filmmaker, uh, filmmakers. And um, I also knowing that this is something that, you know, growing up in school when I personally went on lockdowns and knowing that this was a fear that my siblings were going to be having growing up and even future generations to come, which is obviously such an awful thing with this platform and with this job, there's so many incredible opportunities to speak up about um, issues that are very real um, and relatable, um, but also things that need more awareness and need more touching up upon. Um, reading a script that was so um, authentic and real and and scary because it's so honest, uh, I think that really was what drew me to the script and what I found most powerful about it. Maddie, let's talk about that, you know, the powerful shooting scene. You know, I was telling everyone before this started, my husband and I watched it, we were literally holding on to each other. Like it just, it, our breath stopped. What I find amazing about the movie is, and I said this earlier at one point is, I didn't feel like an audience member eventually. I felt like I was, I felt like I was feeling what Vader was feeling, what Mia was feeling. Um, it just, it, it, it brings you, and I've never experienced anything like this. So Maddie, what was it like shooting that scene? And were you surprised? Cause I'm sure there might be a lot of people say, you know what, you don't need the scene. We all know what happens. What was it like shooting that film emotionally? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was actually the last thing that I shot and I think most of us shot. Um, so to just get to that place right at the end was a journey for sure. But I think, like you said, just seeing how every character kind of deals with it on their own in three separate, completely different ways, I think is really uh, important to see how everyone's coping all at the same time. 
And uh, like, I definitely can't relate to this or I, it was, you know, I couldn't just tap into this uh, really easily, but I think just like, even when I saw like the Sandy Hook shooting, I just remember like seeing that and I knew that I was around the age of the kids that were dying and it was just really, really tragic. And like Megan said, it's something that you just can't stop thinking about. So I kind of, I guess, tapped into that. And obviously having Jenna and Niles are so incredible and they really helped me get to that place for sure. Now Niles, your character, experiences obviously a brother who is killed um in the shooting did you reach out to anybody who experienced something like that so firsthand or did you not have to is it not easy is not the word but is there a way for you to go there emotionally that you wouldn't have to talk to someone who actually went through it well uh personally for me um i felt that is it was easier to tap into because it my father passed away when I was younger, so Sorry. it's not really uh, something that I'm uh, not used to having to deal with that pain. So being able to bring that out, um, you know, uh, I, I guess you say in a setting like this with great actors, it, it was very easy. I felt, you know, when I was in that moment, it really touched me. Um, you know, I was just talking to my mom about that. So Will, Nick plays, um, you play Nick, who eventually turns, in one of the, turns into one of the big student advocates. Um, was he modeled after everyone, anyone? Because we definitely have seen people like Nick who have sort of um, um, been in the spotlight since their schools have gone through such incidences. Did you model, were you inspired by anyone? Did you reach out to anybody? Um, I didn't reach out to anybody uh, personally. Um, And I know I've talked to Megan about this since that um, I don't think the role of Nick was, um, you know, modeled after anyone in specific, but I think that he's kind of a combination of, you know, a bunch of different activists, whether it's, you know, Emma Gonzalez or David Hogg um, is, you know, someone that I'm getting a lot um, in response to this film. But I I, I think it's just kind of, he's the guy that responds to the tragedy in a different way than everybody else. Um, you know, he turns to the activist side, um, which is okay. Uh, you know, people deal with things in different in different manners and tragedy is complicated. And um, yeah, I, I, I guess I would say that his character is a combination of a lot of um, people our age trying to get the word out about um, this, you know, terrible issue. Lumi, one of the things that I love about Amelia is she provides some of the comic relief in a movie that's really heavy. I don't, should we talk about the TikTok video? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> that, wasn't, um, that, that wasn't originally part of the script, but when Megan was texting me, she was like, Louie, do you do TikTok? And I was like, yeah, I do, obviously. <laughs> and and I, was, I just thought that that was so cool because it's like so relatable for many kids and teens. And yeah, she definitely is the comedic relief and She's always making jokes and she's always happy and energetic in all the scenes. Megan, what was it like um, trying to get financing for this movie? Because it is a tough subject. And, you know, a lot of these incidences, these shootings are very recent. They're very fresh. Was it hard to convince people saying, you know what, I'm doing this. There's a take of this that is appropriate for right now. Yeah, people hear a school shooting and they get very nervous, understandably. You know, it's a really tough subject to tackle appropriately and delicately. And I did speak with a lot of different organizations after I had written it to sort of make sure that I didn't want it to be triggering for anybody. I wanted to make sure we didn't ever see any violence or anything like that. So it was tricky. It was um, it was important to me that it felt on track, you know. Um, but yeah, the response generally, people really um, responded to the script, but they either wanted to turn it into more of a issue-based film, you know, they had scenes they wanted to add in or really um, take a strong stance one way or the other about a lot of things, political things with the film, um, or they were just generally like wanted to pull back a little bit. And so I really felt like we needed to experience what Veda experienced in a really delicate and sensitive way so we could understand her journey through the rest of the film. So there was context, you know, for what she was going through and also 
you know, it's really happening. And I wanted it to be um, jarring, but not um, upsetting or triggering for people. So it was a, it was about a year long journey of taking a lot of meetings with people who had strong ideas one way or the other. And, you know, it was just when the right people came along who really believed in the script as it was and believed in the team that we had sort of brought together. Um, it happened pretty quickly. Like I had a meeting with them on a Wednesday and by Friday we were greenlit. So it was a long journey until then, but fast once it came together. Jenna, one of the things that I also love about the movie is that it's not necessarily, it is an issues movie. Obviously there is an issue that's the center of it but we get to see this 360 view of young people in high school. You know, we, we see them, you know, exploring sexuality. Obviously there's drug use, um, there's love, there's relationships, there's parents. It's not, as much as the movie is about the shooting, it's not just about the shooting. Yes. And tell me about exploring all of that within the context of this very heavy subject. Yeah, um, it was, pretty interesting considering I didn't have the typical high school experience. Um, I actually, high school is when I started homeschooling, so I don't know what that's like. You know, it's you live vicariously through friends who maybe do, but for the most part, you're kind of, you know, I've been working on sets with adults and cameras and cut in action and doing like this half, just not proper schooling. Um, so also as somebody who, um, I guess, Veda's or was a lot more social and a lot more interactive. It's interesting to see um, not only what relationships with friends or family may have been like with her before the incident, but also after the incident and kind of the toll that takes. Um, I've never approached a character like this before. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten to, um, I don't know, I guess just kind of go through a, such a variety of emotions with one person before. So I think that there was a lot of experimenting on my side and just kind of going with along with what I felt right or things that I had seen or how I, um, I don't know, I think I spent a lot of time with Veda just getting to know her personally so that when I did have to tackle the harder subjects or the more intense scenes um, comparedly to the really awkward, embarrassing, cringy stuff, which I think was almost too natural for me because I am quite weird sometimes. Um, it was, I don't know, it was, it was a lot of fun and I think it pushed me in new ways that um, I, you know, kind of forced my muscle in ways that I hadn't exercised it before, which was really exciting for me. So what was it like having therapy with Shailene Woodley? Oh, she's the coolest. Um, she's so sweet and she was such a good scene partner and even like doing certain bits of coverage, she was always making sure she was fully present, always gave me her full performance. Um, but also was just very kind and supportive and uplifting. I remember the very final therapy scene that I have, um, which I mean, that scene's been cut down a bit, but still it's super um, intense and somewhat emotional for someone like Veda who doesn't necessarily like to share emotion often, I think, especially with such a touchy subject. Um, but I remember when we were shooting that scene that, um, it may, having someone so talented like herself um, on the other side of the scene with you and being able to interact with her, it kind of helps you get in the moment and it felt very real and she felt like my therapist and that's what it should be. I think that there's very few moments as an actor where you feel utterly fulfilled with the way a scene is turning out in terms of, man, you're connected and it feels right. I feel like this character, I don't remember anything else. You know, this is all I know kind of um, moments. I think that those are pretty rare. Um, far and few be between and I remember every scene that I shot with Shailene had that feeling which was um, very fulfilling and very gratifying I think. So Maddie when you're shooting a film like this obviously it's this heavy intense stuff what do you do when the cameras aren't rolling to sort of be like okay guys we need to relax we need uh, to chill this is a tough day. I already and see any, anyone could answer that because everyone's smiling right now. So I want to know what you guys are doing. <laughs> I just, I just, um, I'm just, okay. Jenna and I, we had some, like, I feel like most of the time we were not well in terms of like, we were just so slap happy at every second. And I feel like it was a lot of Megan just being like, are they okay? Because <laughs> we, we just, I mean, for the most part, as well as both of our characters, uh, 
we find this beautiful friendship out of this tragedy. So um, the vast like difference between the two uh, was fun. So when we had to do the like tough scenes uh, and the more emotional ones, we got into it. But when we were like, you know, grinding the weed and doing all of that, it was just, it was, it, it was, was lot see. I was just letting my camera roll because what they would talk about in between scenes, I was like literally just telling the, I was like, just keep it going. This is gold. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> a lot of improv. So, lot of improv. So, yeah. so Will, what was the best uh, day on set for you? Hmm. I think the best day on set was when we, Megan let me somehow, I don't know how I got permission to do this, but just like drive around Los Angeles in a car with Jenna. We like stopped at a Starbucks, got cake pops, uh, pumpkin spice lattes. Uh, um, and I don't even think, I don't know if this is like a legal issue. I don't even know if the cashier is where we were filming, but um, obviously he has a little cameo in the movie, but yeah, that was just such a fun day. It was so freeing. And it's amazing to have a director like Megan who just lets you like, just play around and do whatever you want. Um, not whatever you want, but a lot of fun things. Niles, what, what do you want audiences to get from the movie, particularly young people? Uh, that everybody is going through something uh, and we should understand that and be there for them. Uh, and, and I feel like communication really matters. Uh, and I, I feel like this is, uh, that movie is, this movie really shows that, especially uh, seeing Jenna and uh, Julie Bowen's character uh, in the movie and how usually I feel like parents are shown in a way where they can't communicate with kids. Um, and a kid can't really talk with their parent. And I really love that this shows that, yeah, you know, you, you need your mom, you need your dad, you need your sister, you need, you need your friend. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I think that's what I, I want people to take from this. And Lumi, how easy or hard is it for you to cry on cue? Because <laughs> you got some tears in this movie. Um, well, I don't know. Every, for some reason, it's kind of easy for me to like cry on cue, especially working with Jenna because she's so insanely talented and it really like helps you. I mean, help like what it really helps when someone that it's that you're acting with it helps that like you cry easily when you feel like you're actually in the character so i think that's how i did it i don't really know how but yeah i will it's, brag on limmy though when she did her self tape <laughs> and sent it in when she was acting with you know her reader <laughs> the tears were a flow and she did it she did an amazing job every so thank you <laughs> thank you we had a few scenes where i constantly like jaw on the floor because i think <laughs> Lumi is such a star and so Thank incredibly you. talented. She's downplaying. She could cry at the drop of a hat. And, and make this is it her first movie. movie. First film. Yeah, Literally the ask you, yeah. Watch out because Lumi is Lumi First is. of many. Yeah. Thank you. Just so Megan, what many people might not realize is that the person who did the music for the movie, quite well known. Tell us about that. Yeah. Few people know who he is. Yeah, Phineas uh, Phineas O'Connell scored the movie, which is insane. Um, I sort of had known him a little bit because I had worked with Billy on a directed a music video for her back in the day, and so we had briefly crossed paths during that process. But um, yeah, he read the script early on, and it was uh, he really loved it. But he was about to go on the massive world tour with Billy, and he was like, "I'd love to do this, but I don't know what my time schedule is going to be like." But like, let's try to figure this out. So we were anxiously awaiting that, and then the tour got canceled, and it was not great for them, but great for our film and his time. And he was awesome to work with. We did everything virtually, everything over Zoom. Um, I really respect him creatively. And I think what he brought to the film is really unique. And this was his first time scoring a film. And I think he killed it, obviously. It's great. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about doing post, I'm assuming most of the post-production was virtual and via Zoom. How I'll wild. How crazy is that? How did you do it? 
Yeah, it was a little tough at times. It was tough because of, you know, technology reasons. It was tough. It was weird. You know, my editor was incredible. Jenny Lee, she was in New York and she kind of hooked me up with what I needed, but it was, um, it was tricky. You know, it's, it's always hard, especially for color sessions and sound mixing sessions. I'm like, <laughs> in my, I'm like, should I listen to this mix on my AirPods? They're like, oh God, no. <laughs> so I really had to trust the people that were, um, that knew what they were doing. And we had a really incredible team. And so I kind of just was like, I'll look to you. You're looking on the real color monitor. You know, if this looks good to you, I trust you. And uh, I, I think it, it turned out, but it was, it was a challenge to do all those things for the first time uh, virtually. So Megan, what's next? This is your feature film debut, directing and writing. Come on, sell it to us. What do you got next? What do you want to do? Give us your dream project. Just say Meryl Street. <laughs> um, I yeah I've got a few things I have another movie that I'm about finished writing and uh, a few more ideas I just need the time to finish them and a tv show that I'm developing with um, Sony and Appian Way and um, a couple other things in the works so I would love to be doing lots more directing and writing in the future and then for all the actors I'm going to ask you so you all be prepared I'm going to ask you now so, Will, what did you learn about yourself while making the fallout? Hmm. While well, I'm first, um, I would say that I learned, I think I said a little bit of this earlier, but I think everybody um, responds to tragedy differently. And, um, you know, in, in my personal life, I've experienced, you know, a fair amount of tragedy, um, as everybody does. And I think there's different ways of, uh, um, you know, dealing with it. And there are very uh, extrovert ways, uh, you know, which is kind of what I think uh, Nick does. And then there are very introverted, more uh, internal processing ways um, that, you know, I think the rest of the characters kind of um, go through, but neither way is wrong. It's just human nature to, um, you know, handle these, these issues and tackle these issues in different ways. What about you, Niles? Uh, I, I feel like I learned two things. Um, I, you know, really, um, studied a lot more about, um, the tragedies that are happening and it, it, it really made me want to speak out more. Uh, you know, so I, you know, I learned that about me. Um, and then secondly, this was my first time really stepping on a set, uh, as a young man, um, you know, because I uh, just turned 19. Uh, so no mom, no school, none of that. So, you know, I'm handling college on my own and uh, showing up to set and driving back home. So that was, um, you know, a new experience uh, and having to introduce myself to new people. Uh, you know, that, that's always something that uh, I feel like is very nerve wracking. Uh, so, you know, being able to do that and the experience turn out like this, uh, you know, I found a I feel like I'd say a comfortability, uh, you know, with myself. So I say that's what I, you know, took away. And Lumi, I'm going to assume that you learned that you want to do a lot more movies. Definitely, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Jenna? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, this film, I think I learned a lot, not only about myself, but just I don't know, I guess my work in general and this career path I've chosen, considering it's the first time I've ever led a movie. Um, I also like to think that with every character that I play, I take on a little bit of, um, I like to take a little piece of that character with me. Um, so I think that there's certain qualities that I picked up on or certain um, aspects, but I'm sorry, there's someone knocking on my door and that is so awkward and they just opened it. Um, Do you know, know the person? No, I don't, but they just left, so we're fine. Um, no, I think honestly what I learned about myself more than anything is how um, uncomfortable I am. I'm not, I don't consider myself a very emotional person. I don't like to, but I think ever since shooting this film, I've had a lot more time exploring my emotion and getting comfortable with that space of myself. And, you know, it's okay to cry or it's okay to get mad or it's okay to feel a certain way. And it's okay to show that and be vulnerable at times because I consider myself a very guarded, protective person. So I think in a way, Veda kind of um, opened me up a little bit and um, allowed me to, I guess, um, discover more about myself because honestly, as an individual, I'm so lost. 
um, I'm so lost. So if there's anything that I learned from this film, it's really just um, being okay with that, that, um, that lack of guidance or, or, or lack of knowing and um, kind of just rolling with the waves and, and seeing what happens. And what about you, Maddie? What did you learn? Uh, I probably, what I learned most about myself and through Mia and playing her is just to not take myself so seriously. I, I think we can, I could probably speak for all of us here that, you know, we're our, our most, like, our harshest critic. And I think while playing Mia, I learned, like, it's okay. Like, and I think you see the progression of her as she starts to let her guard down a bit as she's with Veda, but... I kind of felt that uh, as I was on set every day and I just felt that like, especially being a newer actor and just the, f I still was in shock. I'm like, I don't know why Megan hired me <laughs> just always in those like self doubt doubting moments. I, I was just really happy because this movie did help me learn to just release a little bit more and to allow myself to like make mistakes or try things that I would be too scared to do. So I'm really grateful for that and for Megan for that. Well, thank you everybody for taking the time. Thank you everybody for watching. Um, if you have not seen the fall fallout, Megan, is there, a, is there a place where they can watch it at the moment or it'll be in the future? I think you can just watch it on the South by website if you have a pass as of right now, but we're hoping very soon people can watch it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wonderful. It's powerful um, and I believe Variety called it a stellar debut. Crazy. So, th thank, thank you, you everybody. Thank you. Congratulations. Stay safe and be well. And hopefully the next time we get to do this, it is in person. Definitely.